Okay, this is, uh, can people hear me okay? Make oh. clap to that mic. Can you people hear me okay now? Yeah. All right. So, uh, I'm sorry, my mental gears are still making the shift. This is not your typical panel. I'm still kind of... No, it's not. A little bit. I'm not your typical moderator. No, you're not. Um, okay. So here, here is Matt's three-step process to building up a really good site and getting a ton of traffic. Step number one, make a compelling service. If you're trying to sell junk, you're going to have a much harder time. So spend the time. And the thing is, you can start up a website really for a lot less money than you could even five or six years ago. So I think this has been a very useful theoretical discussion, but let's ground it a little bit. Let's take an actual specific example. Suppose you were going to start a site about, I don't know, rumors about different companies or something <laughs> like that. Okay? And you only had 12 grand. And you only had 12 grand. Now, first step is you make a compelling site. So imagine you've got that. Step number two, start a blog. Seriously, blogs are one of the easiest ways to get links, engage in conversation. If people badmouth you on the web, you can defend yourself or badmouth them right back, depending on what your personality is like. Step number three is smart marketing, and that can involve good SEO. If you do everything on WordPress, you're pretty much automatically covered as far as SEO, but you want to make sure that things are, are crawlable. But the other aspect of marketing is having something interesting to say. So for example, Valleywag, which is a Silicon Valley rumors sort of site, started out with a really juicy piece of gossip claiming that one, per one person at a big company was dating another person at a big company. And that really, I'm not going to name them, but they work at Google. Um, and that helped propel that site up to a really big consciousness. So if I were doing, I don't know, rumors about you know, companies or something like that, I would open it up to the public, but I would also try to do some investigative reporting and get some really juicy tidbits or some really good scoops because it's not just controversy, it's controversy backed by interesting facts. And then I would think about broadening my scope a little bit. Start out with one or two companies that people are really interested in, Apple or Google or Yahoo or whoever, dig down deep, but also be open to new approaches. For example, what if you were to open up gossip and rumors about universities? Kids love to talk, right? People who are 20 years old will talk about all kinds of rumors about the university administration, other people on the university, classes, stuff like that. So looking for those kinds of niches in related areas can really help boost the buzz, boost the links, and boost the visibility of your website. Uh, Matt, you said something very interesting that I don't want to let it just slide by. You said that if you use WordPress, you basically have taken care of everything for SEO. Can you support that? Yeah, sure. There was a really good article, uh, Stefan. There you go, pointing to an article again. All right, so <laughs> Stefan Spencer has talked about it, but in general, WordPress is pretty well SEO, right? If you just start blogging, you'll pretty much be in good shape to get crawled by the search engines. In fact, WordPress 2.3 took some steps so that instead of having your content in three or four different places, they're all unified on a single URL. So you can make your own HTML or you can pay some web designer to try to make a bunch of Flash, but in some cases it makes sense to go for something that's really cheap and really proven. And then if it works out, you can always go with something custom down the road.